What is up, Nephilim? This is the Chig coming at you with an update for the Antarials guide we went over last week. To keep us kind of tied over until they fix our precious baby. But before we get started, go and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, check out my Patreon if you'd like to buy me a coffee or something. Anyway, let's hop right into it. So, first things first, let's talk about the skills. The skills don't change a whole lot. Puncture, enhanced puncture. We don't care about the energy. Fundamental puncture, getting three blades, giving us a higher chance to get our lucky hit. That's what matters. That is our baby. We have one point into flurry. Moving into enhanced flurry, moving into improved flurry. This is going to spread our vulnerable. But we're using flurry to give us the combo point bonus, which is 45% attack speed. We're trying to get to the lowest break point we possibly can. Right now I attack once every 10 frames, which is giving me two attacks every 10 frames. So 12 attacks a second, which is insane. Three points into sturdy, taking close damage reduction. We're always up in their face. Three points into stutter step. If you want, you can take one of these points out of stutter step, throw it over into siphoning strikes for a little more healing, but Andario should keep you topped off pretty well. Moving down into shadow step. Enhanced Shadow Step gives us a crit strike chance against our target. Discipline Shadow Step reduces the cooldown by 3 seconds. So this is going to help us get our Dark Shrouds up and help us get around and get out of dodge. That is our only source of Unstoppable. So don't use that all willy-nilly. One point into Rugged just because you can put that wherever you want. I have one point into Caltrops. One point into Enhanced Caltrops. Mine only goes up 64%. You'll see why in a second. And then into Discipline Caltrops to give me more critical strike chance against Caltrop enemies. One point in the Concussive to give a little bit more crit chance when we knock back or knock down an enemy. Trick Attacks to help us knock down dazed enemies. We daze like mad. It just helps out. One point in the Dash just to have Dash. Being able to have a little more mobility is always good. Three points into Agile or like my boy Warlog likes to say, Agile. Give us a little bit more dodge for three seconds after we use cooldown. We're using cooldowns constantly. You want to max out Dark Shroud. This is our best way to get defense. This helps us out a ton. Enhanced Dark Shroud has a chance not to be consumed when you're hit. And then you have a choice here. I like Subverting Dark Shroud for the movement speed. You can get Countering Dark Shroud if your gear is not as good and you don't have enough crit. Either one is fine. Three points into exploit, extra damage against healthy and injured enemies. Love that. You can get this on your neck. It is incredible. Three points into malice, increased damage to vulnerable enemies. They are always vulnerable, so this is always helping us out. So here's a little bit of what comes in handy. So we'll talk about this in the Paragon board in a second, but we now are leaning into Shadow Imbuement to help us deal more damage. And I will show you why when we get to the gear section, because it's kind of spicy. But... This is also going to help our poison damage because you get enhanced shadow imbuement. You get increased crit strike chance against injured enemies that have shadow imbuement. So when they're below 35% HP and they're shadow imbued. Mixed shadow imbuement. This is how it's helping our poisons. They take 12% increased non-physical damage. So all the time, right? Our poison damages are big, big damage. So deadly venom. You can get this on your neck as well. This is amazing. Increased poison damage. Our main damage is poison. And then two points in that... Chemical advantage, just give us a little bit more attack speed, up to 15% total. And then Frigid Finesse, this is the, I want this on my neck, please let me get this on my neck item. This is the big daddy right here. So you deal increased damage to chilled enemies, increases double against frozen enemies. Mine is currently 40 and 80, yours will be 15 and 30 unless you have items with this. It is huge. Don't sleep on Frigid Finesse. Now, this is where I get a little bit different. I love this right here. Putting one point into Innervation doesn't do us any good because we don't really care about the energy. But, second wind. Every 100 energy you spend grants you increased lucky hit chance. Getting our lucky hit chance as high as possible is going to increase our DPS as much as we possibly can. One point into Adrenaline Rush just to move us down to haste, which is just for movement speed in this build because we're never going to be below 50% energy. So we're just always going to be zoom, zoom, zooming. And then we are scaling our damage with close quarters combat. Damaging a close enemy with marksman or cutthroat skills each give 15% attack speed bonus for 8 seconds. While both attack speed bonuses are active, you deal 10% of your damage 
to crowd control enemies as bonus damage. I currently have 1,020%, so it's 102%. This is a multiplier, so we're just doubling our damage for free. So, Paragon Board. As always, I'm going to tell you what node we're using, and by node, I mean glyph, what glyph we're using, what legendary power we're using. It is up to you to activate that glyph and get the nodes you need. Do not cookie cutter this. If you need more armor, get more armor. If you need more resistances, get more resistances. If you need more life, get more life, and so on. Fill your paragon board in to fix your weaknesses in your character. Let's say that one more time. Your Paragon needs to fill in the weak spots for your character. All right, so let's jump right into it. First, opening board, Tracker. Poisoning damage effects last 40% longer. This is just 100%, 40% more damage because you add 40% duration to a poison, it deals 40 more damage. No brainer. Burst Tree. Exploit weakness. Whenever you deal damage to a vulnerable enemy, they take 1% increased damage for you for 6 seconds, up to 25%. We're always vulnerable. They're always taking extra damage from us. This is great. This is helping us out a ton. Here I have Canny. Non-physical damage increases all non-physical damage an enemy takes from you by 1%, up to 10% for 15 seconds. So after you are fighting them for a few seconds, you get 10% extra damage, which is amazing. And you're also getting a little bit of extra non-physical damage from the canny skill itself, which is amazing. This is giving me 49.5% as of right now with the way I have this set up. To the right, you have the no witness board. You're not getting no witness. You're using this for a close, easy to get glyph socket in which I have control. This is giving me extra damage to crowd control enemies. So this is giving me 13% extra damage multiplicative because of the close quarters combat. It also gives us basically more finesse. It gives frozen finesse. It gives us more damage to chilled enemies and frozen enemies and stunned enemies, which is amazing. And then the additional bonus is that. So there you go. Then we're going to move over here to Cheap Shot. You deal increased damage for each crowd control enemy up to 25%, or you're crowd controlling everybody all the time. It's amazing. That's what we're grabbing there. And we're also grabbing Chip. Physical damage increases the damage an enemy takes from you. I misread this once and thought it was just increases the physical damage. And then I read it again and went, oh. So this is just giving us an extra 10% damage on everything we're doing, which is amazing. Moving up, we have Eldritch Bounty. This is why we're going to be activating our Shadow Imbuement, and I'll show you why in the gear in just a second. But when you attack with an Imbued skill, you gain increased maximum resistance to it and 20% increased damage to that Imbuement's element for nine seconds. So we are using the ability that makes our Puncture use Poison Imbue, so that gives us 20% more poison damage, and we're using Shadow Imbue to give us 20% more shadow damage. And I'll show you why that matters in just a minute. We are activating the Bane Glyph, which is amazing. Just increases our poison damage a flat amount. And gives us a 15% chance to deal double damage over their duration, which is amazing. This procs and you just, whatever you had poison just will fall over. Last but certainly not least, we have Ambush. Every five strength you have gives you increased damage to targets affected by trap skills. Enemies affected by your trap skills take more damage from you, 10%. So, we use Caltrips in this build. Caltrips is a trap skill. We always use Caltrips because it increases our damage after a couple of seconds substantially. So, having Ambush, top, top, top tier, right? Plus, you get a little sneaky thing here that gives you a little bit damage reduction from enemies affected by trap skills. So, that's Paragon Board. Let's check out the gear. This is what I'm more excited about. So, Andaro's Visage. This is the best thing we have. Andaro's Visage, however you say it. Lucky hit, 20% chance to trigger Poison Nova that deals 28,823 poison damage over 5 seconds to enemies in the area. Bam, this is our damage. That's it. All we're doing with that we have the umbrus imprint on our chest armor you do not want life per second here please get a better one than i have i have this because it had ga dark shroud that's the only reason um yours should have max life dex dark shroud or 
if you need a resistance or armor max life dark shroud armor or resistance use this to fix your um defensives if you have the capability you're going to temper this for dodge unless you need a defensive again fill in your reses where you can and then you want a lucky hit chance to cc doesn't matter which this is just to help stagger the boss on the gloves if you have one of your attack speed rolls here you need one attack speed roll it either needs to be on your gloves or your jewelry somewhere doesn't matter where otherwise you're going to make it look like the other pieces all right so mine is dex max life lucky hit chance you definitely want lucky hit chance here ideally you would have lucky hit chance crit chance life lucky hit chance crit chance dex filling in some of your lower spots there i'm gonna try to make that dex roll into a crit chance roll at some point but right now it's just i don't have enough mats here and everywhere you can get it you want to roll damage to crowd control enemies it is your top priority and then again you want lucky hit to cc in some variety so legs minor gg this is exactly what you want yours to look like if you can help it max life armor whatever resistance doesn't matter make your other resistances fit whatever resistance you get on your legs especially if yours look as good as mine make sure if you have the opportunity your legs are max life armor and resistances I'd also recommend if you're low on armor and you have the resources to do it, re-roll your legs or wherever you roll your armor, if it is your chest, etc., until you masterwork one of those armor rolls. It is cheapest to do it on the four roll. Do it there. Again, you want dodge here if you can get it, if you can afford to put it there. And then you want a lucky hit chance to CC of some variety. On your boots, I hope your boots look better than mine. I have armor, move speed, max life. I can afford to get rid of some armor, but not enough to roll off 2800 because it master worked. So we'll see what I come up with at some point. I need a new pair of boots anyway. Ideally, you have GA movement speed on your boots. That is probably what I'm going to start looking for momentarily. So here you want movement speed, one defensive, and max life. On your tempers, doesn't matter which, but get a chance to CC and movement speed. Ideally, each of your pieces of gear has a different chance to CC on it because that proc's gonna help you stagger the boss super fast. The more different ones you have, the faster you're gonna stagger the boss. On the gloves, we're using shared misery aspect, which is moving our CC to everybody in the area, which is amazing. That just makes it super easy to take everybody down. On our chest, we are using the Umbris aspect, which got changed, which is amazing. Critical Strikes, not just from Marksman skills anymore, guys. Critical Strikes gives you a Dark Shroud at a 60% chance. On our pants, we are using basic skills to give us damage reduction because we are only using Puncture for our damage. We're spamming it, and we're just using Flurry to keep everything up. On our boots, we have Concussive, which is giving us a chance to daze, and we deal increased damage to daze enemies. Enemies are always dazed. It's amazing. Our weapon. You want dex, max life, damage roll. Not damage to over time. You want damage because damage rolls double, double dip. So this is making your other things hit harder. And you get double that value for your poisons. You're going to roll damage to crowd control enemies here. You're going to roll at least a 59% chance for puncture to cast twice. It needs to be 59% or you will not be able to get over 100% easily. If you roll 59%, you only have to master work at one time. So what I would suggest is get a crossbow. The reason being vulnerable damage is a little more useful to us than damage to distance enemies. Roll it until you get 59% and then master work to four until you hit it at 59%. That way you can just master work it the rest of the way up. Our imprint here using an agility skill is actually not correct because I just switched my bow. So look at me go. I'm actually glad I'm doing this. So what you're going to imprint here, you're going to imprint retribution. So what retribution does, this and enemies have a chance to be stunned. That's not the big deal here. 
The big deal is we get 60% increased damage to stunned or knocked down enemies. So we're just getting extra damage to enemies that are stunned or knocked down, um, which is all the time. And that double dips on bosses. Our neck. Mine is not what you want. You want frigid finesse and the poison one that I forgot the name of. Hold up. What is the poison one called? Let me go look. I don't want to tell you wrong. Deadly Venom. Okay, so on your neck, you want Frigid Finesse and Deadly Venom and Lucky Hit Chance. I would much, much, much rather have Deadly Venom than Movement Speed on this, but this is what I've got. All right, so you also want to make sure you roll damage to crowd control enemies. I was trying to get Movement Speed on this as my secondary roll. Now I have Movement Speed after killing an Elite. It's just what I have. Um, that's a good spot to put a defensive if you need it. Uh, you could roll dodge there. You could roll a resistance there. You could roll whatever you need there. Um, once I get a better neck, I'm probably going to put dodge on my better neck. And then we're using noxious ice imprint here. Chilled enemies. Poisoned by poison imbuement can be further chilled. And you deal increased damage to poison um, with poison to frozen enemies, which is amazing. Here's what we were talking about a second ago. You want at least one piece of gear with an attack speed roll. So I have dex, attack speed, lucky hit chance. This is basically exactly what you want this to look like. You can also use this as a slot to pick up a little bit of crit chance. Crit attack speed, lucky hit chance is going to be really good. Um, whichever works for you, right? Then you are going to roll agility cooldown on both rings if you can. And you're going to have damage to crowd control enemies. This one is the noxious points. This is, or pestilent points. I'm sorry. This is giving us a poison imbue on every third puncture, which is activating our Eldritch Evolution um, key node, which is giving us 20% extra poison damage. You need that. So you don't have to actually use the poison imbuement skill. Rapid loop. Like I said, this has got max life, lucky hit chance. Mine happens to have resistances. Uh, once I fix my resistance problems, I am probably going to make that into crit chance. But as of right now, that's what I got. Agility cooldown, damage to crowd control enemies. And we're using rapid here. 30% increase attack speed to basic skills. We're going zoom, zoom, zoom with passion points. So, bursting venoms. This is what I got here. Lucky hit, have a chance, imbued skills, create a toxic pool. You can also use this right here. You can use 30% damage um, by using of the elements. Whichever works for you is fine. What I have here is a damage over time roll. You want that to be damaged like this one. Dexterity, maximum life, crowd control damage, and caltrips duration. This is where you're getting your caltrips duration. You're gonna get caltrips duration on both weapons. If you don't have the Doombringer, we're gonna talk about the Doombringer in a second. Um, if you're not using the Doombringer and you're using one of these, I have mine as caltrip size just because it's easier for me because I am bad about keeping them in the caltrips. So you can roll caltrip duration on both of them if you're better at keeping them in the caltrips, you'll get more damage overall with that. And again, damage to crowd control enemies. And then you have your poison imbue there for bursting venoms. You can make that an elemental, whatever you want it to be. Now, the reason I'm doing this and the reason I'm even updating the guide is with the change to the Doombringer, that explosion got double damage, right? So that double damage is huge. This is making our speed clears faster. And the reason it's making our speed clears faster is because this explosion, since we're scaling so much non-physical damage in our build, is actually huge. Um, you'll see when I'm showing you the gameplay that it procs for millions of damage on trash, and it can really, 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 really speed up what we're doing. Not to mention that this is one of the best defensive items in the game. It's going to give you a ton of life. It's going to give you a flat amount of damage. It's going to give you damage on your core skills. So if you're using it in a different build, it's going to be amazing. 25% chance to deal damage and reduce the damage you take. So with this on, I have 62,000 HP. And they take they deal 20% less damage, which is just amazing, right? And then that 23,000 proc, you'll see that it blows up a little harder than that. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do a 101. If you do not know what potions you use here, you use advantage, gives you attack speed and lucky hit chance. You want as much lucky hit chance as you can, and then you want to hit whatever attack speed breakpoint you're at. It does not do you any good to have a little more attack speed if you do not hit the breakpoint. I will link a calculator that some people made that Zario brought my attention to in the description. That way you guys will be able to see that and use it. So first thing you want to do is make sure you get up some dark shroud stacks so you don't get one tapped when you jump in and then you just run through until you see yourself explode when you see yourself explode you are basically good to walk away because your dot and if you happen to get a explosion are going to just take care of the mobs you can see there i didn't even pay attention to what their hp was but after i knew they were dotted I walked away and you could just watch my progression bar go up from there, right? So this build is super fast, super fluid, super fun. Well, I got stuck on the wall there. Or I would have got past a little faster. But as you can see, we're just rolling through. And it's always like this, guys. This is a 101. I have to hit things like two or three times and then I can walk away from them and they are done they just fall over you don't have to wait for them to finish you can just roll on and this is i would like to point out that our buff has not been live yet so andy's is still bugged it is still doing less damage it is still not giving us the 50 percent increase that they said we were getting so once we get the 50% increase, this is going to be even faster. You're probably going to be doing this on like 111 or not 111, like 109, 110, um, maybe 111. I don't know. We'll see. Um, regardless, you can see how fast we're rolling. Um, and this is without the extra damage. Obviously, we do have the extra damage from the Doombringer. Do not forget if you're using Doombringer here that when their health bar disappears it's doombringer when their health bar gets shaded out and i walk away it's andy's um, if you notice that doombringer normally brings them down to about half and then i walk away because andy's already has the rest of it grayed out and they are getting ripping pepperoni see like right there bang okay they were at half i was walking away blew up right so you come in on the boss you do what you can right as you're getting ready to stagger them you go ahead and get everything up and then hold down the puncture button and they get rid of a brownie it's easy as that guys i will leave links in the description to a build guide it probably won't be mine because i haven't put one together yet and i will also put some links to the calculator and stuff in there i'll have to double check and see what the person's name is but it is on the calculator so you can give them credit and maybe go buy them a coffee on their patreon or something but i will catch you guys in the next one i appreciate you sticking around and happy hunting